Greetings everyone, I'm Dr. Ant. If you live in the United States at the time of the filming of this video, I assume you are aware that the United States Supreme Court will probably overturn Roe v. Wade in June 2022. This will make abortion illegal and will remove bodily autonomy from those who can get pregnant. But it will also have unintended consequences for conservative men and women who have pushed for this outcome. Although this video is for everyone, I particularly wish to speak to men who want abortion banned. Abortion bans appear to be written by those who do not understand reproductive biology. This is not too surprising since sex education, if it is even taught, does not adequately address reproductive biology. Biology classes in high schools also tend to skip the topic. Therefore, we should not be surprised, although we should be extremely disturbed, that so many adults understand little to nothing about reproductive biology. A fertilized egg or zygote is not a baby. An embryo is not a baby. A six-week embryo is the size of a pea. Can you even see that? And looks like any other mammal embryo, including an elephant at that stage. Embryos can be frozen and then thawed many years later to be implanted into a uterus. Babies cannot be frozen and then thawed out years later and still be alive. In the first trimester after conception, it is extremely unwise for a person to consider themselves pregnant. This is because so much can go wrong particularly in the first month or so. When something goes wrong, it results in a spontaneous abortion. A spontaneous abortion is the correct term for what may naturally occur in the first trimester. In fact, 50 plus percent of products of conception spontaneously abort in the first trimester. In the past, before the development of pregnancy detection sticks, a pregnancy could not be confirmed until the end of the first trimester. Those of us alive back then would call a spontaneous abortion a missed period, which is what it was and what it is. There are many ways for spontaneous abortions in to to happen, but a very common one, men, please pay attention, is defective sperm. Healthy men make millions of sperm every day. When you make that many widgets, some are bound to be defective. If a defective sperm manages to find an egg, the resulting zygote will also be defective. Some defects may be survivable, but most will not be. Those zygotes or embryos that are too defective will be spontaneously aborted. The pregnant person will have a missed period. Should the pregnant person be criminalized because a man's defective sperm caused the embryo to spontaneously abort? If abortion is criminalized and if no exception is made for natural spontaneous abortions, what does this say about our humanity? Another example, the zygote gets stuck in the fallopian tube because the cilla in the fallopian tube failed to push the zygote into the uterus. The developing embryo eventually causes the fallopian tube to rupture, usually in the first trimester, between four and eight weeks. 
the embryo cannot survive and frequently the pregnant person will not survive without a medical abortion. Around 6% of pregnancy related deaths are due to a ruptured ectopic pregnancy. The majority of ectopic pregnancies are spontaneously aborted with the pregnant person having a heavier than normal period. Should a woman with a ruptured ectopic pregnancy that requires a medical abortion be denied that life-saving operation? Is death of the pregnant person an optimal result of banning abortion? 90% of medical abortions are done in the first trimester. So the overwhelming majority of abortions both spontaneous and medical, occur in the first trimester. Declaring that life begins at conception violates biology, logic, and reality. The very few abortions that occur after the first trimester are usually in the first weeks of the second trimester and are the result of the pregnant person having had difficulty obtaining the abortion in the first trimester. Occasionally, in the second or third trimester, the developing fetus dies or has an abnormality incompatible with life. Leaving the dead or dying fetus in the pregnant person's body can be life-threatening for that person. Once again, are we going to let a functioning human die to prevent the abortion of a dead fetus? Why is the life of an actual human being considered less important than that of an embryo, which is not yet a functioning living individual? Among the unintended results of strict abortion bans that define life as beginning at conception are the many pregnant individuals who will be criminalized for having a missed period and the many other individuals who will die because they have been denied life-saving abortions. Zygotes and embryos should not be given more importance and higher legal status than actual living, breathing, functioning human beings. Men who know little to nothing about reproductive biology should not be allowed to write laws. And no laws should exist that prioritize a tiny cell over the individual in which that cell is developing. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel.